Hello there, folks. Welcome to a new series on the channel. It is Football Manager Experiments. I'm sure you've seen Football Manager Experiments before. In fact, one of my most popular videos ever on my channel, the most popular video, was indeed a Football Manager Experiment, looking at Football Manager a thousand years in the future. Today, though, we're going to look at some transfers. I'm going to do this throughout the summer as well. Obviously, transfers are a big thing in the summer. The transfer window opens. People go crazy for rumours. And, of course, Romelu Lukaku has been the subject of lots of bids all over the place. Uh, I should say with this series, let me know what you think of it. Let me know about the format and how it's going to operate. And uh, we're going to do things slightly differently in that. We're not going to take Lukaku, send him to a team and say he does. We're going to compare him at lots of different teams. And that's something I'd like to do going forward with players as well. Maybe someone like Anton Griezmann would have been a good option until he kind of said, I want to start a flat coming Madrid. But leave your suggestions in the comment section. Uh, other players we could do, moving them around a little bit. Maybe we could do the same thing with managers in the future as well. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the format as we move on. So with Lukaku, what we're going to do is we're going to compare how he did in the game, in the season just gone, obviously because the squads are legitimate and, and the squads that have happened, it'd be ridiculous for me to now suggest what transfers might happen with teams. So we wouldn't necessarily get a fair test. Whereas the game as is, we can kind of look at and how he would have done in the systems and the squads. And obviously that will impact if players should be moved on, what would need to happen for Lukaku to have a better season and of course how all of this would affect Everton that's obviously something some people often forget is that when a player moves on what do they do with the money they got for him now we're going to set Lukaku's transfer fee at 40 million you may well argue it should be more should be less but it's really what we see Everton do with that money in reality Everton aren't going to go out and spend more than that on a striker so 40 million is where we've set it now we can see straight away 15 goals in 38 appearances, uh, zero assists, and an average rating of 6.72, which you've got to be honest, isn't that good. Everton themselves, then, how do they do in the Premier League? 18th position with Romelu Lukaku. Now, I think if you played Football Manager 2017 this year, you'll know Everton don't have the best of years, but to have them relegated with Lukaku is a bit of a turn up for the books. Will they fare better when he's at other teams without him, where they can reinvest the money perhaps in other areas? That's the sort of thing we're going to look at then. So Lukaku's not had the best of years, it has to be said. Everton got relegated. Not a very good season from them. They also brought Babakar in to rival Lukaku in the striking options. He had a pretty average year. Three goals, uh, 19 appearances. Not, that very, not very good at all. So overall, Everton haven't had a very good season and have ended up getting relegated. They went on some awful runs as well. Did uh, did Ronald Koeman stay in the job? I think that's probably worth looking at. No, he didn't. Philip Koku came in and didn't make it any better, essentially. So there you are then. That's how we did at Everton. Of course, we're going to compare these at the end of the video. Uh, things like average ratings, uh, average goals per game, things like this. So stay tuned. You'll find out how he did compared to the other teams. But let's take a look around then and how Everton were affected when he moved to other teams. Okay, let's then look at Merseyside rivals uh, Liverpool. The striking positions for Liverpool have been a little bit funny. I think there's, there's an argument to say they do need a striker. How would he have done at Liverpool then after his £40 million power move? Well, 28 appearances. We'll obviously see if those were substitute. As you can see at the bottom there, 10 uh, starts, 18 substitute appearances. A 6.99 average rating. We're just looking at league form, remember. Uh, but six goals in 28, not the best, you have to say. We'll be competing with Roberto Firmino, with Daniel Sturridge. And you can see from the goals scored for them this season, across all areas, Mane was getting the goals. Coutinho, Lallana, Firmino's there as well. Did manage to score more than Daniel Sturridge, although Sturridge only registered four. And I guess he and Lukaku were rivaling for that starting spot. Uh, as mentioned, though, we're going to see how Everton did. Again, Everton relegated. Liverpool finished second with Lukaku, so maybe someone to go to. 67 points, uh, sorry, 97 points and 96 points for the two sides at the top. Only two defeats for Liverpool uh, with the Lukaku uh, in, in their side. Three for, uh, for Arsenal. They win the league. Nearly another invincible season for Arsenal. But Everton again got relegated. Let's see, though, who did they bring in? Now, interestingly, from what I can work out there, they've brought in a left back in uh, in Congolo. They've brought Tufan in, who's again not a striker. They tried to strengthen the midfield and it didn't really work. Uh, Kodic came in as well from Dino Gro over at Zagreb, a wonder kid, and uh, Kenny Tete, who again is a right back for Ajax. So they didn't actually bring in a striker. I dare say that was a risk. Their goals came from Enna Valencia, who they seem to trust to play instead. It it didn't it didn't work did it oh oh dear okay let's move on let's go to manchester united now united one of the teams that are rumored to be in for them along with chelsea to so the other side's not necessarily in for them but all could maybe do with striking options you think the spurs have only really got harry kane arsenal are never really happy with their strikers uh so romelu lukaku at manchester united let's see how he did six goals in 16 only 16 appearances a 7.02 so slightly better than at liverpool and uh, if we bring up the manchester united squad we'll see how he compared uh, in the league to other players then so of course Zlatan Ibrahimovic with, with the most appearances 19 goals for united that season uh, lukaku six goals nine starts seven substitute appearances may well have been used in europe more uh, but because we're only focusing on the league that's what we have to look at we'll look at again a really good average racing you've got to say 8.10 if you, if you register it there you can see 
the highest goals per game ratio of anyone in the Manchester United side, but didn't play that many games. Uh, United themselves then finished fifth in the league table, so it didn't really have that much impact. Having another striker didn't matter too much. Zlatan was top goal scorer along with Harry Kane. Everton, though, surprisingly, finished uh, 12th this time, so not relegated. Let's see, what did they do with the Lukaku money? Well, they went out and spent it. That's to say, oh my word, they, they loaned in... Kylian Mbappe, of course, a player that everybody is very, very familiar with. Uh, only one goal from 10 games. It didn't have the greatest of impacts. In fact, he was brought in in the January. The only August deal they did, again, was Kenny Tessie, the, the, the Ajax right back. Uh, they got a chap in from Hanover. There's some Tonkani from Fulham, who's again an attacking midfielder, but not a striker by any means. Uh, who got the goals for Everton in this season then? Ross Barkley contributed from midfield with 10. You had uh, Sebastian Haller, who is a striker, actually. Sorry, was he brought in? Did I miss that? Yeah, he was. Uh, seven goals from 15, so he contributed a little bit. Not a massive amount, but did a, an okay job. And again, Enne Valencia there with the goals. You can see from the goals per 90 minutes again, 10 starts for Haller, uh, 0.7 goals per game. Not too bad at all, you have to say. Average rating wasn't particularly good, but not too bad. So Everton fared quite well that time, spent the money wisely if he'd moved to Manchester United. Of course, these transfers depend. Wherever they go, it's always going to check... Like, the chain of events is always going to be different so that's why we're looking at different teams as well okay let's go over to Spurs and see how we did at Spurs okay so of course rivaling with Harry Kane Romelu Lukaku uh, at Spurs did 12 goals 3 assists a 7.29 that's the best we've seen so far by, by, uh, by distance 21 appearances overall we'll see how those appearances were spread over the course of the season then uh, oh 21 starts no substitute appearances Harry Kane in fact 14 substitute appearances 17 starts in the league so it was very much a, a rotation system that we've seen with Pochettino actually do that with Kyle Walker and Trippier at the back and obviously Davis and Rose have done a similar thing at the left back area Pochettino continued that and did it in the Premier League with Romelu Lukaku but again let's see how this all affected Everton in the league table Spurs finished in second place Everton down in 13th again not have, like they had a decent season this year finishing seventh um in real life of course didn't do so well with Lukaku in our game version uh let's see then what did Everton do who do they bring in uh, this time round, then they brought in Carlos Soler. I'm going to be honest; I don't, I don't. He's not all too familiar with me. A Valencia midfielder uh, and Jefferson Lerma, who again a defensive midfielder, and Kenny Tete, who is just a must buy for Everton. Apparently, uh, did spend 52 million after bringing in the 44 Lukaku, but again didn't go after a striker. And goal wise, we see again Enna Valencia the top goal scorer. Ross Barkley not too far behind. And in fairness, not many goals elsewhere at all. Um, so an average season for Everton. Didn't fare too well without the Lukaku. And we are sort of getting the sense now that unless they bring in a striker of maybe not a similar, a similar calibre, but someone that can offer sort of 10, 15 goals, they're always going to struggle. OK, Arsenal. We're saving Chelsea to the end because that's the most likely transfer. OK, Lukaku at Arsenal. How did he do? 14 in 23 appearances. A 7.20. Rival Spurs. Very good, actually. Um, and has had quite an impact there. I think Arsenal fans would quite like Romelu Lukaku at their club. Uh, let's see how he did then compared to some of the other players. Alexis Sanchez from left wing. 21 goals. Uh, Lukaku right behind him, though. Olivier Giroud took a bit of a back seat. You've got to say only eight starts for him between them then. Obviously, that was rotated a little bit in the league. Danny Welbeck had four starts as well, but potentially he was another striking option for them. Uh, goals per 90 minutes again, 0.76. We're going to compare some of these stats at the end, so don't worry. And uh, yeah, 7.20. Not too bad at all. What did Everton do? It's worth saying straight away. Arsenal won the league with Romelu Lukaku. Arsenal fans would certainly like that. Everton, again, 14th position. Haven't done too well. We're seeing suddenly a bit of a trend here. Uh, strikers brought in then, again, went for Sebastian Haller. Obviously, see him as a bit of a, not a straight swap for Lukaku, but similar. Kenny Tetti, of course, brought in again. Uh, Anse Korek had a change this time. with the brought in Amrabat, the winger from Watford. Um, they didn't let anyone else go. Tom Davis seems to go out on loan every single time. But again, Sebastian Haller seems to be the man they continue to bring in. Maybe someone for the future then uh, for Everton fans to get hold of. I don't know. So Everton, again, not done too well, you have to say. Uh, goal scoring wise again. Enna Valencia tops it. Barkley Morales, we're seeing a trend here, aren't we? Now, on to the final team then. Chelsea, the team he's most likely to go to how did he do now the situation at Chelsea I think it's fair to say is interesting with Diego Costa there currently and is most certainly the starting striker at Chelsea how did Lukaku fit in is it a case that Diego Costa will have to leave Chelsea for Lukaku to fit in is there a similar situation going on with Manchester United and Zlatan Ibrahimovic how are, how are they both going to coexist so we'll see then Nine goals, 23 appearances, not not starting every single game then. And a 6.95, lower than the average I think we've seen so far with this experiment. Uh, let's see, how has he done overall then compared to some of the other players? He is third on the list. Hazard with 17 goals, 12 assists. You've got Costa just behind him. And you can see 28 starts for Costa playing most of the games. And only nine starts for Lukaku in the league with nine goals, two assists. You can see though, from the goals per game, um, goals per 90 minutes I should say, Lukaku tops it again. Beats out Diego Costa quite a substantial. Substantially there, sort of a 0.14 
uh, difference between the two. Costa, though, a much better average rating, and you suggest there with the seven assists, just contributes more. That's why he's getting the starts. Of course, slightly older than Lukaku, not a massive gap in it, though. We should forget Costa, although he looks about 35, is still 28-29. And there's obviously a lot of talk that he'll move to China. That might be what's required then to get Lukaku uh, firing for Chelsea and starting for them in the league. Of course, at this point, though, we don't know. As this has been recorded, we don't know if Costa's going to leave. Of course, there was talk he'd go back, back to Atletico Madrid, but with their transfer ban, does that keep him around? That is why the Lukaku deal is so interesting. He said he wants to leave Everton, and there's lots of places he could go. So now let's look at some averages. Oh, no, sorry. First, let's see how Everton did. My apologies. Everton relegated again. It's not been a good time for them. Uh, did they bring anybody in oh this time interesting different striker now uh, Matthias Jorgensen came in from Copenhagen he's a defender and they spent 43 million so they're spending the money to, uh, to, again Kenny Tete it's always about 40 million on him overall 26 up front uh, Ben Pearson from Preston defensive midfielder but Lee Griffiths the Celtic striker known to a lot of football manager players is quite prolific only four goals though in 18 uh, for six million pounds I mean quite a cheap deal a 6.71 didn't play all so well for them uh, is it going to be Enna Valencia and Ross Barkley again at the top uh, no, Barkley's had a pretty poor year. Was he out with injury or something like that? He didn't play at all. Well, actually, no. He played 32 games, but only two goals and one assist. You've got to say, when they've gone down, Ross Barkley, maybe it's an issue with his consistency, didn't do so well. So let's look then at the averages. Who comes out on top? Where is the best fit then, according to Football Manager, for uh, Romelu Lukaku? Let's take a look. So we're not going to look at goals so much. We're going to look at the other things that, that are there. We saw that he scored goals at every club, but not ever that many. He wasn't really a starting striker, apart from at Everton. We can see from the appearances, 37 appearances uh, for Everton, only one from the bench. You can see at Liverpool and Chelsea, he was coming off the bench an awful lot. Manchester United there as well, coming off the bench, not getting as many starts. Arsenal, though, played a lot more. Spurs, the same. Very similar for those two. Of course, we've got strikers there already, but could use Lukaku as maybe a secondary striker. Uh, if we take a look at the average ratings, then, you can see Spurs there coming out on top. A 7.29 playing far better for them than anyone else. And interestingly, Everton, where he got the most games, a 6.72. Chelsea, a 6.95 over the course of the league season. Doesn't really compete with the other sides above them. So if he goes to Chelsea, again, it comes down to this cost of thing, doesn't it? If he leaves, that's probably going to be what What's required to get the best out of Lukaku and the average goals per game for me the most important one goals per 90 minutes how is he doing he fared the best at Manchester United and Chelsea the two teams most likely to sign him so again given those one of games this could well be the best fit for Romelu Lukaku really like again played the most games for Everton but a 0.48 not the best Liverpool and Spurs identical a 0.68 probably don't need him probably not a necessity and similarly with Arsenal probably won't go there but had a similar record to Chelsea actually Arsenal closer to Manchester United than Chelsea than they are Spurs and Liverpool. So you can see Lukaku's best fit probably is Manchester United or Chelsea. What do you think? Where do you think Lukaku would best fit in? Uh, do let me know in the comment section. Of course, let me know how we did with this video. Do you like this sort of thing? Do you want to see more of it? And if you if you do, there'll be certainly be more coming your way. These are really fun to do, really interesting. So uh, if you've enjoyed it, do drop a like. And if you want to see some more experiments as well, do uh, subscribe to the channel. Of course, I've got another series on the channel with Spell currently going on at the moment. Check that out as well. Uh, but we love with care from me. Until next time, until the next experiment, I'll see you again. Goodbye.